हरे कृष्णा सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग चतुर्थ श्लोक की भगवत गीता द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोक विच समराइज द एंटायर भगवत गीता सो कृष्णा इज वेरी काइंड एंड वेरी मर्सीफुल इज गिविंग अस दिस फोर वर्ड्स सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज दिस एंटायर भगवत गीता व्हाट इज द एसेंस ऑफ एंटायर भगवत गीता एंड हाउ कैन वी एडवांस इन स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ एज फास्ट एज पॉसिबल सो इन द प्रीवियस श्लोका द फर्स्ट श्लोका दैट वी सॉ ऑफ दिस चतुर्थ श्लोक की भगवत गीता that is shloka number 8 of 10th chapter so there krishna made it very clear that he is the supreme personality of godhead he is the one from whom everything and everyone emanates or he is the source of everything and everyone and anyone who knows this that person is a wise person who engages himself in service of krishna with bhava samanvitah this was the word that was used bhava samanvitah so that means he worships the lord he serves the lord with all their hearts now this all their hearts it's very difficult to comprehend what does that actually mean and how this pure devotee is actually worship the lord so this krishna is speaking now in the second shloka of chatur shloki bhagavad gita that is shloka number 9 so let's see that machitta madgata prana बोधय परस्पर कथय तुष्य रमती च नो कृष्ण इज ग्लोरीफाइंग इज प्योर डिवोटीज एंड हाउ दे वर्शिप ही सेज मच चित्ता द थॉट्स ऑफ माई प्योर डिवोटीज ऑलवेज डुवेल इन मी मच चित्ता मदगत प्राण देर लाइफ्स आर फुल्ली डिवोटेड टू माई सर्विस and then tushyanti cha ramanti cha they derive a great pleasure satisfaction and bliss from what from bodayantah parasparam kathayantascha maam nityam from always enlightening one another and conversing about me so here krishna is saying that the pure devotees their minds always dwell their thoughts always dwell in krishna and their lives are completely dedicated to service of krishna and the only activity that these people do is all these pure devotees when they come together they take a great pleasure and satisfaction in discussing about the glories of krishna's name form qualities and pastimes so very very important shloka very instructive for all of us we all are sadhakas we are all are neophytes we have just started practicing bhakti so this is what is the goal finally where we have to reach we have to become a pure devotee this human form is given so that we can become a pure devotee break the cycle of birth and death and go back home back to god to krishna so here there are some parameters you now which are given in the purport even in the shloka so that we can advance very fast and we know what is the goal so let's see few of those important points from this purport pure devotees whose characteristics are mentioned here engage themselves fully in transcendental loving service of the lord this is the first point that that is to be noted the pure devotees they fully engage themselves in service of krishna fully there is no there is nothing called as part time bhakti it's full time full devotional service their minds cannot be diverted from the lotus feet of krishna their talks are solely on the transcendental subjects their minds are always absorbed always absorbed in thinking about krishna always and they are not at all interested to talk about anything else apart from krishna conscious topics so these are the three important points which are mentioned here and this is something which we have to reach before we die before we leave this body this stage we have to reach what is that the first one is we have to engage ourselves fully in the service of the lord second our minds have to be always engaged in thinking about krishna and third is the talks which are there are only and only and only krishna conscious they want to speak krishna conscious topics they want to hear only krishna conscious topics these are the three important points and this is what we have to strive for one day we have to reach before we leave this body we have to reach this level where we meet or where we fulfill these three points which krishna is talking about devotees of the supreme lord are 24 hours daily engaged in glorifying the qualities and pastimes of the supreme lord their hearts and souls are constantly submerged in krishna 
and they take pleasure in discussing him with other devotees. So they are completely submerged, completely immersed in Krishna consciousness. Now someone might ask, what do we mean by immersed in Krishna consciousness? Let's talk about immersion in material world. So if we see a person who is completely materialistic, all the time he will be completely busy thinking about various material aspects of this world. He will be thinking about, oh, no, I have got this much of money, where should I invest? Oh, I have to go to office and do a particular thing. Oh, this much money is needed here, I have to get this particular thing. I have to go for this party. Oh, that movie has come up, I have to watch that. Oh, new restaurant has opened, I have to go there. So many materialistic thoughts will be there. Completely immersed in thinking about that. He is completely a pure bhakta of maya or material world. Completely immersed. Similarly, obviously I gave a very very uh, low example but then this is what we can relate to. In a similar way a pure devotee is completely absorbed thinking about Krishna. That what my Krishna needs now. Okay, I have to serve him. Oh, I have to get fruits for him, flowers for him. I'll, today I'll cook a very very delicious sweet rice with condensed milk and all the dry fruits. And for that I have to get this, I have to get that. Oh, now Janmashtami is coming up, so I have to get some beautiful clothes for Krishna. And you know, all this is there about service. And then you think about, oh, this message of Krishna consciousness should be given to as many people as possible. I have to preach. So for preaching, what, I'm, what all things am I supposed to do? This is a very, very important mission that Krishna has given me, to spread Bhagavad Gita everywhere. So what are what all the other things that I can do you know, in this particular uh, service? And then, this is thinking about the service, executing the service. Other aspects are, he is completely immersed in chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. He is completely busy hearing about the discourses on Krishna conscious topics, on Krishna and teachings of Krishna. He is completely busy meditating on Krishna's name, form, qualities and pastimes. This is called as completely submerged, completely submerged in Krishna consciousness. There is not even a tinge of materialism, materialism anywhere, completely submerged. Now can we imagine where is a pure devotee and where are we? <laughs> this difference we should know very clearly so that we don't mistake ourselves as pure devotee. Chanting few rounds and reading few verses of Bhagavad Gita does not make us pure devotee. We have to get immersed in Krishna consciousness and it will happen. Manusha Janama or this human form is given only for this purpose so that we get immersed completely in Krishna consciousness. And it will happen. There is no doubt about that. Because this form, the body that is given to us is meant for this particular thing only. So we are at a very low platform as of now and pure devotees are on a very high platform. But our goal is to become a pure devotee before we leave this body. If we are one-pointed devotees, surely we will become pure devotees very very soon by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. Here it is said, in the preliminary stage of devotional service, they relish the transcendental pleasure from the service itself and in the mature stage, they are actually situated in love of God. Once situated in that transcendental position, they can relish the highest perfection which is exhibited by the Lord in His abode. Currently in our stage, when we do any service, we, we actually try to seek some pleasure from that service. But when we perfect our life, when we attain Krishna, we will not seek pleasure from the service. We will get pleasure when we see that Krishna has got pleasure. When Krishna is pleased, we will get pleased. That's a very high level, very high platform. Where the person's entire existence is only and only to give pleasure to Krishna. But then, you know, it's, it's, it feels it's all lofty. But then, we have to understand a very, very important point here. Well, a very nice shloka from Chaitanya Chaitamrit, where it is said, Brahmanda Brahmite Kon Bhagyavanji Guru Krishna Prasade Paya Bhakti Lata Bij. So Brahmanda Brahmite Kon Bhagyavanji. So we all as living entities, we have been going through this entire Brahmanda, this entire universe. And we are taking different, different bodies, one after another, after another, every lifetime. So we are those living entities who have been transmigrating from one body to another, to another, to another. And finally we have got a human form. And still, not all human beings are Bhagyavan or fortunate. Who is a Bhagyavan Jeev? A Bhagyavan Jeev or the fortunate person is a person who meets a pure devotee of Krishna. 
May it is said that when when good fortune arises in one's life, a person meets a pure devotee of the Lord. Pure devotee means the one who has attained Krishna, the one who is liberated, the one who is one who has broken the cycle of birth and death. He is a pure devotee. And when we meet such a pure devotee, what happens? Such a pure devotee sows the seed of bhakti in our heart. And now the seed is sown in our heart. Now we have to grow this seed. What are we supposed to do? We have to water it very nicely. And what is the process of watering? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. So the nine angas of bhakti, out of the first two which is there, Shravanam and Kirtanam, that is actually watering. So when we are every day chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. What is happening? We are watering that seed and that seed is sprouting and it has started growing. So we have to we keep watering every day. Ch chanting and hearing goes on. Now, when this when this bhakti lata starts growing with proper nourishment given through our chanting and hearing, what happens is it grows very, very fast, depending on the sincerity and seriousness of the devotee. And then it goes up, grows and grows, it breaks the covering of material realm. It enters the Brahma Jyoti. Then it enters the spiritual planets and finally takes shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna. So when a plant grows and then when uh, a nice watering and everything is done, the plant is growing, what will happen? Nice fruits and flowers will come. So all those fruits and flowers of this Bhakti Lata, this Bhakti Lata which has grown, will be offered at the lotus feet of Krishna. So here it is said very nicely, that when the complete plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of Supreme Lord, one becomes fully absorbed in love of God. Then, note this point, he cannot live even for a moment without being in contact with the Supreme Lord just as a fish cannot live without water. In such a state, the devotee actually attains the transcendental qualities in contact with the Supreme Lord. So what happens? When we fall in love with Krishna, what happens? We cannot stay even for a moment. Even for a moment, we cannot stay away from Krishna. And how do we contact Krishna every day? By chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So when we are in love with Krishna, what will happen? We cannot stop chanting. Chanting will just go on because we want to associate with Krishna all the time. Here it is said, Thus the realized souls in Krishna consciousness take continual pleasure in hearing such transcendental literatures just as, you now see the analogy that is given, a young boy and girl takes pleasure in association. So a young boy and girl who are attracted to each other, they are so eager to take each other's association. And when they want, they have to separate to go to their respective houses, they, have, they feel so much of pain. Same thing happens with a pure devotee, where he is always hankering for the association of Krishna and he feels a lot of pain to think of getting separated from Krishna. So this is the level of a pure devotee. But one thing is there. We all are on the bona fide path. We all know what is supposed to be done to become a pure devotee. That is chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Shravanam, that is hearing and reading Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Associating with the devotees and praying intensely for the association, guidance of a pure devotee. When, when all these things are there in our life, the only thing that will happen is we will become a pure devotee. So it's a very, very important thing to note. It is not impossible to become a pure devotee. It is possible. Human life is given for becoming a pure devotee. But this desire should be there that I want to become a pure devotee. I want to fall in love with Krishna. I want to attain Krishna, go back home, back to Godhead and serve Him for His pleasure. If this intense desire is there, everything else will manifest. But now we might say that, but see Prabhuji, whatever you are saying, it's okay, but then... We are in ignorance. We are in this world which is full of ignorance. So how will how we'll get to know what is supposed to be done at times when you know, we are in a critical situation? How will we understand what are the different, different things to be done for going back home back to Godhead? So Krishna knows that we'll ask this question. So he's going to answer this in Shloka number 10. So let's see that in the next video. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna.